All right, everybody. Good evening and welcome to our virtual ICAST 2020 for Shimano. My name is JP DeRose and we are live. Uh, tonight is a freshwater deep dive. And I'm kind of excited about that because there is so much to talk about with you guys. So we are doing all of the 2020 new freshwater product that would have been de debuted at ICAST. Unfortunately, as everybody knows with the circumstances right there, you know, we are just basically having problems already. There we go. Let's see if we can hang that up. All right. So basically with ICAST and the things we're going through right now, we can't be there. It's my actually first time in 15 years I haven't been there. But the great news is with this virtual ICAST and our team at Shimano, for the first time ever, you, the public, are going to get a sneak peek of our product as we release it. So in the background, I've got some of our top level pros waiting to answer your questions regarding application of product. And we've got our Shimano SAC team sitting in the background. I've got Trey Epic waiting for me back there. So why don't we get to it? We've got a bunch of people tuned in already. Do me a favor, folks, help us spread the word. Hit the share button. It literally will take you two seconds. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring in Two people. I'm going to bring in Trey Epic. Trey, how are you, sir? Doing well tonight. How are you, JP? I'm doing great. And we're going to bring in Luke Clausen, who was just finished fishing, I believe, at Sturgeon Bay. Luke, how are you, bud? Good, JP. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. Thanks for joining us. I know you just got done with, it, with an event, but we're going to put you on the spot right away, Luke. Uh, and we're going to talk new product. And we got Trey here. So, folks, if you got technical questions, we've got our product manager, Trey, here. If you got fishing application products, we've got one of the guys who tested out the reel for us, Luke Clausen. So, without further ado, let's get to the new product that we're going to talk about first, Corrado 70 MGL. So, uh, great news about this reel. Corrado 200K came out two years ago, was it, Trey? Uh, 2017 was Corrado. Three years ago. I'd say three years ago now, yeah. Three years ago, and it boasted a whole bunch of new stuff. Obviously, the Hagane body, uh, the micro module gear, all these things that made it just a phenomenal performing reel. Three gear ratios, left and right handed. But now we got a new addition, the 70. Um, give me a little breakdown, Trey. What is it about the 70 that makes it kind of special? Um, well, I mean, in this MGM. Well, uh, this year, we, you know, it's built on the 2016 Corrado 70 platform. So tooling wise, um, it's the same. But what we're able to do with kind of modular design is build out you know, more sophisticated reels within these tooling sets. So the big changes here were that we added this MGL spool. Um, what a magnum light spool is, is it reduces inertia, basically. So it uh, makes flipping and pitching way easier, allows you to cast lighter lures easier. And really, that's what this 70 size is designed to do. Uh, it's super compact. It's really ergonomic, really lightweight, palms incredibly well. And uh, I say flipping and pitching, and a lot of people think, well, a 70 is kind of small for that. Well, we put this bigger Corrado K 200K handle on it this time. So it doesn't have that smaller handle. Um, it's got plenty of drag. It, it, uh, it's really built to do a, a lot of things. Um, it's not going to be a distance caster for big baits with big line. That's not what this size is about. But if you're using lighter braids, you know, you're wanting to throw uh, something on 20 and 30 pound braid, that's totally doable. You're wanting to flip, flip and pitch. You're wanting to throw uh, little crankbaits on, you know, 8 to 12 pound fluoro. Um, there's a lot of applications here. And there's a ton of tech in this as well. As you mentioned, the, the same features from the Corrado K being uh, SVS Infinity Braking, uh, brass micromodule gear, Tagane body, um, you know, a ton of host, a host of features, but um, ultimately it's it's super compact and ergonomic and offers the angler uh, a, a nice nice option for some of those other techniques. Yeah, and so the full list, I've got it right here, and we can pop this up for folks to see, and these are our specs for the MGL 70K. Obviously, like you mentioned, micromodule X-ship, so double bearing supported gear to add power and torque. Uh, Hagane body, which is the all metal body, CI4 plus tray. So, is the side plate CI4 plus on it? Yeah, it's the A side plate is CI4 plus just to lighten the reel up overall. Nice. And you can see, folks, by the, the specs we've got here 6.9 ounces, really a lightweight reel, but still boasting the same drag with the cross carbon drag as our full size 200 reel. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So, MGL spool and S3D design, uh, SVS Infinity braking, 
SARB bearings, super free spool, and cross carbon drag. So, Luke, you've had a chance to actually fish this thing. What are the applications you're finding the Corrado 70 to be like that perfect fit for you? Yeah, you know, there's a lot more actually than I thought when I got the reel. I have one here in my hand that uh, I've been playing with for the last, I, I don't know, for a while here. Anyway, there's a lot of different things you can do with it as long as you're not using heavy line casting a long distance. It really is beneficial uh, over a full size reel doing a lot of things that you're moving a lot with. So with a jerk bait, a top water, anything you're moving your hand a lot with, jerking, whatever, the ergonomics of it, get your hand grip a lot tighter, a lot less hand fatigue. Of course, the weight's a lot lighter and it casts light baits really well. Uh, I've thrown a fluke style bait on it a lot. And uh, like I said, top waters and down to like a 0.5 size square bill, a really small square bill on it, casts really well. And it, and it excels at those light line techniques. Personally, I'm going to use it about 15 pound line and under for most things. Um, and even 15 pound may be too heavy if you're trying to cast long distances because your capacity is going to get lower. You want to move to a 200 at that point. But those light baits and baits that you're moving a lot, you're having to work your hand uh, and create an action in your baits. It really excels in those situations. Again, it's really impressive how well it casts those light baits. Yeah, and you mentioned 15 pounds. So with 14 pounds, they're rating it at 70 yard capacity. Uh, but 10 yards, uh, 10 pound test, 105 yards, which is plenty. No one's really casting that football field when they're getting out there. And again, so two gear ratios, Trey, is what you guys put on the table, a 7.4 to 1 and an 8.1 to 1, uh, both left and right handed. And when it comes to inches of line per handle turn, so 29 and 32, they're kind of that perfect jack of all trades reel, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's a super versatile gear ratio is going to give you a lot of options here. Um, ultimately, uh, I prefer an XG gear ratio when it comes to things like throwing a topwater, throwing a frog, flipping and pitching. Um, I tend to prefer that HG in a 7.4 when it gets down to more things like dragging and even some cases winding a bait. I, I tend to go a little lower sometimes on gear ratio when I'm winding a bait, but with this size reel, uh, an HG allows you to actually cast and retrieve too, because your, your, your inches per crank isn't getting too high. So this is going to be a fine reel for, yeah, throwing a smaller spinner bait, throwing a little buzz bait, um, just all kinds of things. Yeah, and like you said right off the hop, that low startup inertia of that spool, so finesse baits, pitching, skipping baits, stuff like that. So, Luke, uh, obviously we appreciate your time dealing with this, and uh, thank you for putting your mitts on these things to test them out. Where are you off to next, bud? Well, JP, I'm going to go home for a little while and see my little girl, but I do have a couple more things to add on the reel if you got a couple minutes here. Uh, we always uh, have time for you, bud. <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, one thing that really struck me with this reel is the full-size handle on it. It doesn't feel like a small reel. I've used a, this frame size reel before over the years, and it always feels like a smaller reel. With this bigger handle on there, it really feels like a full-size reel in your hand. You don't have that feeling that you're trying to crank like crazy and you're not getting anywhere. Uh, that's really one thing that struck out to me with this reel that makes it feel like a bigger reel. And if you want to get away using heavier line, light braids, another great way to go on this reel. I've been using some 30 pound braid on them too. Um, it's a great way to get a little bit more line strength. Still, you don't lose that spool capacity and cast for their distances and have no stretch, of course. Great points. Uh, again, Luke, thanks very much for your time. I know you are dying to get home. So we're going to send you on your way tonight, folks. Again, if you have questions regarding what's going on with this stuff uh hit us up in the comment section we are going to be here uh trey is available to answer tech questions for us and spec questions uh luke thank you very much for your time bud we're going to keep moving on but folks that is your first recap of the corrado 70 mgl corrado k 70 mgl two new gear ratios left and right handed seven four to one eight one to one trey when are we expecting to see these things hit the stores um They'll be uh, basically everything we're launching today is going to start shipping anywhere from early August up into uh, late September, early October. It just uh, varies by skew and sometimes left versus right handle. But look for all these products and uh, basically in your dealers this fall. Awesome. All right, Trey. Well, we're going to put you on the side for a bit here. We're going to move on to the next question. So everybody hang tight. So that is our first product, 70 MGL Corrado. We're going to move right over to Josh Douglas coming up next here. And let me tee up the next product here. So we're talking about this. We talked about this yesterday. It was our best in show freshwater reel entry for this year. You can see it here, the new Vanford. So let me jump in, Josh. Josh, how you doing? I'm good, JP. How are you, man? 
I'm doing great. All right, we're going to bring Trey back in because there's a whole lot to talk about this reel. And the first one you hear from people is, did you discontinue the CI4 Stratic? So, Trey, I'm going to let you handle it because your explanation is going to beat both mine and Josh's probably. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, ultimately, yeah, we retired the Stratic CI4 brand name, um, you know, and, and that's uh, that's led to a lot of reaction in the market from our consumers and our dealers. Ultimately, uh, th that decision was made because we feel that this reel deserves kind of its its own legacy, right? The, the Stratic and Stratic CI4 have actually always been uh, fundamentally different platforms, different tooling, different materials, a lot of different feature sets in a lot of cases. And um, ultimately, you're, you weren't just choosing between a Stratic and a lightweight Stratic, you were choosing between a Stratic and a completely different reel. You know, the Vanford context, and, and one thing we lack here in the US market is that uh, in Japan, we sell Vanquish, right? And Vanquish is kind of our flagship ultra light uh, MGL style spinning reel. Um, and this is ultimately kind of like a CI4 plus version of a Vanquish. That entire feature set has been trickled down from Vanquish into this reel, including the Magnum Light Rotor. And ultimately, a Stratic and a Vanford are going to be really good for different things, right? Um, with that mag Magnum Light Rotor, uh, you get super fast startup, really light rotation on that rotor. You can get on those fish really quickly. Um, it's, you know, lightweight and uh, super fishable all day. So it, we, they're two distinctly different concepts of reels. And we wanted to kind of do them both justice and give them their own brand and move forward. And uh, ultimately, Stratic CI4 was a great product with a great legacy, but that it was built upon, you know, the, the feature set that that we've deployed in this reel, but in, improved upon, right? We've trickled down Micromodule 2 gears, we've trickled down X-Protect, we got the new design Magnum Light Rotor, we've got Hagane gear, we've got all these things that make this reel just a, an absolute dynamite option at this price point. So Josh has actually had more time on the water with this reel than I have. So I'll let him Me talk too. about the application, <laughs> um, you know, and I'll, uh, I'll back off and answer the, uh, the nerdy tech stuff. So, all right. So before we jump into Josh, so Trey went through a bunch of the features. So I want to go through the full list of things because when people ask about this reel, like Trey mentioned, it's going to have its own legacy. It always has, but it's got its own brand really now. Uh, but Hagane gear, it's our, our cold forged aluminum gear with micro module two uh, X ship, which is a double bearing supported pinion gear, silent drive. So silent drive is one of those things we're going to talk about in a bit with Trey. MGL rotor. And really what I noticed, Trey, when I looked at the two compared to the Stratic FL, which really Stratic FL was as close to a Stella as we've ever gotten at that price point with the feature set that was on it. This one seems like that Stratic FL, but it's got a couple of bonuses in it in the MGL uh, rotor and that CI4 body. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's got everything that a Stratic would have plus that, um, you know, it's ultimately a different construction from the housing and the rotor standpoint. So um, that actually makes it a, a really uniquely different, even though it has trickled down some of those similar feature sets that you mentioned. Um, All right. but the, the characteristics of the reel are very different when you combine a CI4 plus body and a Magnum light rotor. All right. And Josh, so like, like Trey mentioned, you were the lucky guy that you actually, if people have seen the ad for Vanford, you're that guy on the lax just beating on those brown fish. So give me your first uh, initial reactions. I know you compared to most are, you're a 4,000 spinning reel kind of guy, but you got a chance to use the 2,500 and the 3,000 as well. So what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, uh, a, a lot. I, I actually I, I fished the four thousand so much for uh, some of the other um, benefits that a four thousand brings, which I, I right away was struck by like the three thousand stuff, how fast the reel uh, picks up. The the first thing I noticed is how light it is and how smooth it is at the same time. Uh, it's a strong reel. You know, the Lake Malax smallmouth are not small. You know, they're four or five, six pound fish, and uh, it, it has all the guts. To, to handle those fish yet still in a light frame and uh my casting distance an, another really big one you know we're talking about glacial lakes northern smallmouth bass i can't tell you enough how much long i mean you know jp up in your neck of the woods how important it is to be able to make super long casts and I, I, right away i noticed immediately and we're throwing little light stuff you know little tiny marabou jigs little ned rigs uh, light stuff, fish were up shallow, but I could bomb cast 
uh, with that reel. And, and a lot of that has to do with that long strokes pool. I know in the way the line's laying on there, it doesn't want to catch. There's no resistance when the line is coming off of the spool. Uh, again, those big long casts uh, and, and just the internal guts on that thing. It, it's the drag's amazing. If, if I heard the click, 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 then those fish were coming. I, every single one of them, they were coming in the boat. They're they hook good. And I could definitely stay with those fish. And, and lastly, uh, a big deal, important thing to me is those fish are big. They, they bite. You got a long, when you have, when you're able to make such long casts, you need to be able to pick up line fast and get control of that fish immediately. And that reel just, just has all the makings to do everything like that, that I, that I need. Awesome. And again, for, in terms of availability, another thing that's very different from Stratic FL is the amount of models available with Vanford starting at a 500. Uh, there's a 1000, but there's also a C2000, which we haven't done in a lot of years. And what it is when folks, when you see a C after the letters, it's the compact body. So it's the same body as the 1000 with a deeper cut spool. That's why you see VF 2500 and VFC 3000, same size body, deeper cut spool, more line capacity. And we have a 4000 and a C 5000. So now there is seven models for Vanford to cover everything from finesse panfish to inshore saltwater, really Trey, these are saltwater approved, are they not? 100%, yeah. I mean, uh, the C3000 uh, is gonna be a dynamite option for inshore, um, the C5000 as well. Um, the 4000 can cross over to the guys like Josh that, you know, smallmouth guys that like uh, having that higher line pickup. Um, but yeah, there's some dynamite inshore saltwater sizes in this as well. And then everything down to ultralight trout and panfish stuff and ice stuff with that 500 size. So really, really diverse and, and uh, far reaching series. It's going to touch, honestly, fisheries across the entire country and the entire globe, really. Um, you know, this is a global launch and, you know, we're going to see uh, all kinds of applications for these sizes. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and then for those of you who are looking at the specs, which I've put up the specs for Vanford F, um, 2,500 and under use the felt drag system that Shimano's used, tried and true, phenomenal. And then from 3,000 up, they're using the cross carbon drag. So you can see the 4,000 and 5,000, you're able to put out 24 pounds of drag. That's a lot of stopping power. So if you're snook fishing or red fishing on the inshore, or you want to use it for Chinook salmon on the shores, or you want to use it for carp fishing, this reel is going to be able to handle all of that. So uh, that is Vanford. Again, Josh, once again, we thank you for your time, dude. Uh, you're the lucky one that got to test it. Wishing you luck. When's your next event, bud? Uh, we got lacrosse coming up, um, the lacrosse tournament, and then uh, we'll see with all everything shaking up. But one thing I do want to add on that is uh, because it is in my backyard, Minnesota, uh, ice fishing is huge. Everyone knows I'm by far the least ice fishing expert in the world. But one thing I do want to say is my phone has been blown up with people uh, kind of geeking out about that 500 size for ice fishing. And uh, I, I think that that little size is going to be pretty sweet. I might even have to get me a little ice rod uh, myself. Wait, wait. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited about it. I, I went ice fishing with JP back in February up in his dirt. And that was my first time ice fishing since I was a kid. And uh, I quickly got hooked. So uh, <laughs> looking forward to maybe the three of us can actually do it next winter and, and, yeah. up and use some Vanfords. And I'll go to either one of your dirt to do it. I don't mind. I'll, I'm, I'm happy right to on. take the trip. So. Oh, I, I got a spot that's perfect because when we actually filmed this year, we had the Vanford 500 ice fishing. And we got like giant bluegills and big crappie and largemouth and smallmouth through the ice. So I think that'd be a perfect test to bring you guys up on something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm all be awesome. All right. So, um, folks, th there's your mono and power pro capacities on this. I'm, I saw a couple questions. Moose asked about how much line he could put on 2,500 if he doesn't have a line counter. Um, you know, all your specs are going to be on the boxes when you pick up these reels, but they're also available on fish.shimano.com. So any of the spec info you need. It's going to be up. And most of the retailers will also have all this information on their website. So good idea to always check it out. You can see the ratings on these reels, but I'm seeing already, I've got a penchant to get that C2000 in my hands because I like 1000 size reels. But when you give me an extra 40 yards of line capacity on a 1000, it's a no brainer for what I love to do up here. So Josh, thanks very much, bud. Good luck on your next event. Thank you, JP. Thank you, Trey. See you guys later. All right, man. Be good. All right, Trey, so we're down to, let's get rid of this. I'm going to pop you up full screen here. 
So we're down to how excited are you about the lineup this year, Trey, in terms of the new product? Because it does seem like we've got quite the stout lineup. Yeah, man. I mean, I, you know, I never am not excited about this. And that's one of the cool parts about my job is I just I get to uh, be a part of, uh, you know, working with an incredible team that gets to bring these amazing products to market. And um, I'm excited for this every year, you know, and uh, it's it's uh, unfortunate that we all can't be together at ICAST this year. I think, uh, you know, working fishing shows that sometimes can be arduous, but, you know, we really got to kind of look at, you know, we get to work in the fishing industry and, you know, you get to see your buddies there every year and all, you know, the pros and dealers and reps. And, um, you know, it is disappointing that we all can't be together this year, but uh, we're doing our best here. And um, yeah, you know, we've got some incredible stuff and I'm happy to, to be here to be able to try to connect with the consumers and dealers in any way we can. So well, we are definitely, definitely uh, glad you can make it tonight. So let's bring up our next product and our next guest, uh, newly redesigned Zodius. So we're going to bring Keith Combs into the mix because Keith was our guy that put some time and put some effort in and got a video done for us. So Keith, how are you, bud? I'm good, JP. Trey, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's great to see you. All right. So, Keith, you had the pleasure of working the new Zodius, and I mean, the big features Trey's going to go through, but right off the bat, when people look at this, they're going to notice there's a carbon monocoque handle on this rod. And, and the one thing they might not notice, but will be eternally grateful about is a hook keeper as well. So, <laughs> Trey, why don't you run through the specs on the new Zodius rods? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Zodius is a series that we originally introduced in 2015. It's been... Uh, a super consistent series for us and uh, something that uh, is a ton of value for this uh, $200 price point. Um, it's got the high power X blank construction, same as the previous version. It's got Fuji K guides with Alkanite rings and an SIC tip, same as the previous version. And uh, the CI Shimano CI4 Plus custom perfection reel seat. Um, it's got a new little anodized foregrip here with some uh, kind of stylized cutting on it, really sharp on the shelf or on the front deck of your boat. As you mentioned, the hook keeper, um, honestly, in all of my travels the last five years, the number one request I got from consumers and dealers on these rods were was a hook keeper. So we listened, we added it. Um, you know, we're happy to do that and uh, understand the, the need and desire for it there. But most importantly, we added this carbon monocoque handle. And, um, you know, you're starting to see more of these style handles in the market. This is something that Shimano um, is uh, proud to be one of the first to market with and kind of we have our original own designs with these carbon handles. Um, this is a true rolled hollow carbon core construction, incredibly sensitive and lightweight, uh, up to 30% more sensitivity in a rod with a carbon monocoque handle. Um, and just overall, uh, you know, we add a little bit of balancing to the back end of it so it balances well. Um, you would think that this would make it tip heavy, but it really doesn't. We take a lot of time and care and consideration into our real seat positions and then also adding uh, appropriate little balancing pieces so that it it, uh, it feels good in hand. But I mean, honestly, um, Zodius has always been one of my personal favorites. There's just something about the cosmetics, the way the rods fish, the way they feel, the value in them. Um, and uh, I'm super excited for this one. We got some new models in, in it as well. And we can, uh, you know, we can dig into this model by model. But, you know, I know Keith's had a chance to fish with them and spend some time on the water with them. And, uh, you know, I've personally fished the previous version with Keith before or down in Texas, and I know he's excited to uh, to have some of these new models, so. All right, Keith, so you are the man that has actually physically used these things. We were frozen when this stuff started coming out, so I didn't even get a chance to put my hands on one. This would have been my week to grab one, but uh, give me your impressions. What what have you used the, the, the new rod for? So have you been flipping with it? Have you been cranking with it? What have you been doing, and how is it responding? Well, the Zodius is a big part of uh, my rod lineup, and it has been, you know, for my entire time with Shimano. Uh, a lot of my rods, like the 175 Heavy, I use for frogging, uh, casting a big worm. Uh, my cranking setup, uh, 172 Medium Heavy Glass. Um, I have my swim jig rod right here in my hands, 172 Medium. That is a rod that I use for, I mean, tons of things. Swim jig, um, you can go spinnerbait, it's a very versatile rod. Um, but really, the uh, you know the old Zodius, I love the rods. But the the uh, the addition to the uh, carbon monocoque rear grip has changed a lot as far as sensitivity. I mean, the first thing I did when I 
got these rods in my hand as I held one and, you know, kind of, you can just tap, you can just tap that, that rear grip and you can feel the vibration through the blank. I mean, you can tap foam and it's kind of dead. So that's added a lot of sensitivity. I really appreciate that. You know, when I'm, when I'm holding this reel, it's against my form. It's against a big chunk of, you know, of, of skin that I'm feeling every little thing on the bottom, every little thing my bait does. So, uh, you know, that's really changed a lot. It's, it's just, you know, enhanced the Zodius line tremendously. Awesome. Uh, Trey, in terms of people are going to ask and they're going to tap that handle. It does feel like it's metal when you tap on it. You, you would think it's aluminum or something like that. Is that, it's a wrapped, is that like a, a carbon tape that they're wrapping with when they're doing that? It's actually, it's a, it's a rolled carbon. Um, and, uh, you know, we've uh, kind of uh, made a special process to make this. Um, but it's a, it's a rolled carbon. And then ultimately it's got uh, two different textured paints over the top of it. Um, but yeah, it's despite the fact that it's kind of a hollow carbon uh, setup, it, it feels rigid, right? So I think kind of that's the, you know, the sense you're getting where you think it almost feels like metal, but um, it's just the rigidity that you get from, from this design. And um, it's a really unique uh, piece of our kind of carbon butt design. As I mentioned, you're starting to see more of these style grips in the market. And, um, you know, one of these things is not like the other in a lot of cases, right? So um, sometimes there's foam spacers in them and uh, they'll be heavier and, and different, but this is a true kind of hollow core construction that um, is incredibly rigid, but also incredibly lightweight and sensitive. So, Okay. And one thing I noticed when I quickly perused through the spec sheet, which we've got up now, uh, there's a couple new rods that really tweaked my curiosity. Um, I believe I saw a seven foot LA light and a seven foot six light. So small mouth anglers rejoice. I mean, those are two rods we've been wanting. I've seen the seven foot uh, LA in the X pride lineup, which is one of my favorite rods. Now we've got one in the Zodius lineup with the monocoque handle and a seven foot six. So uh, any other new rods that were brought in? Yeah, we've got um, a seven foot medium heavy as well, which um, just giving guys another option there for a medium heavy. It's got a slightly different act action than the seven two medium heavy. It's a little bit faster. Um, you know, Alex Davis and I fished that rod uh, uh, both that, and we both really love it for for skipping a like a three eighths ounce jig and. and and, and some finesse jigs and things like that. It just gives an angler another option and a retailer another option for a medium heavy. Um, there's also that 7.2 medium light bait finesse rod. That's kind of a personal favorite of mine. Um, we've got that in, in X Bride as well. And uh, that rod has got a, a, a long, funny story to it. It was kind of a, a, originally a mistake where we were trying to spec out an X Bride and we were trying to make a, a longer, heavier option for a drop shot. And uh, there was some miscommunication. And the sample we got was a, it was a bait caster and not a spinning rod. And uh, we took it out. I was living in Japan at the time. We took it out and fished it on Lake Biwa. And it was just dynamite as a finesse caster. I was even throwing Ned rigs on it and little top waters and fell in love with it. So we deployed it in x -Bride. It's been really successful. And now we've got it in Zodius as well. It's a perfect, perfect match with the Corrado 70 an Aldebaran uh, 50 MGL, an SLX 70 MGL. Um, there's a lot of options that go, and it's a, it's going to be a super diverse uh, finesse caster. So ultimately, you can't do your light Nako rigs or your light Ned rigs or your hair jigs. That's that's still going to be spinning rod stuff, right? But yeah. when you get into that in-between gear, the stuff that, you know, you've always kind of been frustrated trying to throw it on a bait caster, but you really want to throw it on a bait caster to be able to manage those fish around cover or things like that, it's... Uh, it's something that uh, is going to give a really good crossover. I know uh, if Keith could prefer it, he would never have a spinning rod in his hand. So <laughs> that, that, that 7.2 medium light is going to give him that option to essentially probably put down the spinning rods forever. So that, uh, that would uh, be a perfect one for that. And, you know, you may notice that the glass crankbait rods are missing. I, I'm not going to hide it, right? Um, so, you know, development capacity has been an issue, right, with COVID, things like that. So we do have glass models coming in the future. We're actually fine, getting our field test samples now. And so you'll see those coming in the future. But uh, you've got your core lineup here to start. And uh, you're going to see some, some great glass additions. And we'll continue to add new models and keep the lineup fresh, as we've done with most of our Bass Rod series. So, Well, Keith, that gives you some help. You can now use a casting with that Bait Finesse 7.2. Uh, you're swinging north, Keith. Your next move is going to be, I believe, the St. Lawrence River. Is that your next event? 
Yes, sir. We're leaving. Uh, I'm leaving Texas on Thursday, heading that way. Uh, you know, it's been it's been a, a kind of a difficult setup for this tournament, but uh, you know, Bass has got us a, a game plan. I'm just excited to uh, go fish another tournament, and you know, we'll follow that one up the very next week with uh, Champlain. So we got two dynamite fishing holes coming up, and uh, you know, I mean, I get excited when I head to New York in the middle of summer, get out of this Texas heat, and uh, catch some big, you know, good solid fish up there. I love it. Well, absolutely. Uh, so one question, you mentioned which one you were using for frogging. Was that the 7.5 MH or the heavy that you're using for frogging? I Actually, I use two different Zodius models. I use the 175 heavy, or if I get in some really, really heavy cover, um, I'll go to the 175 extra heavy. Um, but that, that 175 heavy, I mean, that is a solid rod. You can use it for frogging. Um, I cast a Texas rig on that rod a lot around here with a big worm or something like that. That's the thing about the, the Zodius lineup that, I, you know, people ask me about rods and I mean, I automatically point them to the Zodius lineup because we have, you know, we have something for just about every technique and, you know, for the price point, you're getting, I mean, a, a bargain to me, uh, especially when they added the, you know, the more sensitive uh, rear grip. I mean, that's changed it, but uh, you know, it's a, it's a good balanced rod um uh, has you know the high power x i mean there's no roll there's no nothing like that i mean this is this is a well-built piece of equipment and uh we got something just about for every technique awesome all right bud well we wish you safe travels uh heading to new york hope you whack them you're gonna probably catch them on a crankbait like you did last time thanks but uh have some fun up there and we'll we'll talk to you soon all right trey so we have gotten through zodius i'm gonna pop you up here uh, let's start ripping a bit. We're going to bring in Lawson Tillman in just a second here. Let me get this set up here. And, uh, so we got another MGL on the horizon. So let's get Lawson. Lawson, how are you, bud? Hey, I'm good. How are y'all? Doing great. Uh, Lawson, for those of you who don't know, is the face of SLX. He has been since we first introduced it. Um, Lawson, you've been fishing FLW? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's your year been going? I know it's a little odd for you this year. I mean, you're a rookie really on the tour, but this has been a very weird year for you. Yes, sir. It has, but it's really given me a lot of time to, you know, test new techniques and uh, kind of give me a little advantage because I get to kind of learn what all these older guys have known forever. So it's really helped me a lot to really get, you know, get me established on what I like to fish. All right. So you're going to be dealing with SLX. We got two new products coming from the SLX line. So Trey, uh, we talked a little bit earlier about Corrado K MGL 70. Now we also have an SLX MGL 70 coming to market. So uh, break it down for us. What's great about this thing? So ultimately the, uh, you know, the, the concept of the whole SLX family was we wanted something that was really compact, super rigid with a long handle um, that could kind of meet the needs of, of tournament anglers and across the board at an affordable price point, right? So compact and versatile. Uh, this is the same tooling set as the SLX XT. The big difference here is gonna be this MGL spool. So this is still kind of that 150 size frame, right? But it's got a shallower spool in it that makes it the 70. So it's not like the Corrado 70 MGL, which is built around that smaller dimension spool. Um, what this is going to give you the advantage of is kind of that full size real feel, despite the fact that it is really compact and ergonomic, but that uh, that lighter, uh, lower line capacity option. And the benefit there when you shallow up that spool is it really enhances that that ability to flip and pitch, cast lightweight baits. Um, you know, going to be a dynamite option for for throwing a little wood, little wood crankbait or um you know all kinds of options flipping and pitching it's got the big handle on it just like the slx and slx xt and dc um it's kind of become like common handle with uh with a lot of our uh, us bait cast lineup and i'm um, just going to give the anglers another option to uh to upgrade kind of your slx we've we've got a lot of new anglers in the family in the shimano family with slx and uh, guys are starting to figure out that you can kind of step up your game a little bit you can get into an xt and get the sbs infinity braking system you can roll up to an MGL and get that SPS Infinity Break plus the MGL spool, or then you can take the step up to the next level and get a DC. So ultimately, we've got a family of reels that it's kind of easy for the angler to understand the different technologies between the series, and uh, and it's really affordable. You know, there's a ton of value in the SLX series. They look cool. They all match well. 
Um, I know a lot of a lot of a lot of people are really concerned about well, how their gear looks and whether it matches and, and looks good on the front deck of their boat. You know, I get a little matchy matchy with my stuff too, and that's one <laughs> awesome thing that we can do with the with the SLX series is mix and match between rods and, and different real series, and and it all looks clean and and, and good. So. Um, you know, I've actually run into Lawson on the tournament trail in the last couple of years, fishing the Costas. Uh, I fished on the coast side and I've seen his, his, his boat loaded with SLX rods and SLX reels. So I'm sure he can tell you more about them. Yeah. There's, there's probably not a better person we can have explaining them in form and function. So, uh, I just quickly, before we move on to Lawson here, uh, so am I reading this right? So there is a six, three right-handed, but then there is a seven, two and eight, two left and right-handed. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah, we've got that uh, that seven normal gear, the six three to one, in, in the right hand only, and then yes, you have your HG and XG in both lefty and righty. And one forty nine, I mean, for an MGL, I, we've never done anything MGL at the one forty nine price point. We've set a lot of, we've broken a lot of barriers with the SLX family, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is the by far the lowest price point we're going to see that MGL spool. There's an incredible amount of value in this reel, and from a feature set perspective. Um, you know, these, these MGL spools, it really kind of gives it the feel and casting ability of a high performance, higher end reel, something you would expect out of a, a Kronark or a Metanium or an Aldebaran, that type of type of reel. Um, but you're really, that spool performance dropped down to a really mass market affordable price point. That's a big deal. All right. So Lawson, you've been fishing them, dude. I mean, give us your, give us your opinion. Cause you've had this SLX MGL 70 in your hands. How is it fishing? How's it performing for you? I've got to tell you, I, I fell in love with this reel. At first, you know, looking at it, I was like, man, it's going to be expensive reel because it feels, you know, it's got that really nice feel to it. It's compact. It's got that large handle. And so it allows you to really winch on those fish. Um, but, I mean, it just, it feels great. It's still light, 7.1 ounces, I think. And uh, it, it fishes really well. But I love it because I can throw, you know, Ned rigs, finesse stuff. I can throw it all day long on this because I'll be honest with you. I, if I can throw a bait cast or I'm going to throw a bait cast or I don't, I'm not a big fan of spinning reels. And so this allows you to put, leave those spinning reels in your boat and not have to worry about breaking them out. So uh, I just, it really gives you advantage to be making good casts with those. Uh, but again, uh, like balsa wood crankbaits, you can still throw them with this, even heavier stuff. It's, it's, it's an ease. Um, flipping. Great for it. You know, that 70 size reel, it, it's compact. It allows you to do all kinds of stuff. All right. We're going to bring back up the spec sheet on this one. So, again, Trey mentioned the fact, I mean, Hagane body, MGL spool, S3D, uh, SVS infinity braking, SARB bearings, uh, super free spool, and cross carbon drag. Again, 12 pounds of drag, just like the big boys, just like the 150 size and 200 size reels that we have on the market. And Lawson, you were bang on, bud. 7.1 ounces, so very lightweight uh, and still decent capacities, really. When you talk about 80 yards of 40-pound power pro in that situation, oh, yeah. that's, that's a lot. And 70 yards of 14-pound test. I don't know many guys that can throw a small, light crankbait 70 wow. yards, if any. So, no. yeah, ton, tons of drag, tons of casting capacity. Uh, pretty excited at 149. But let's slide right over. While we're here, we got Lawson here. We got a new lineup of rods to fit into the SLX family. So let me just get my mitts on them. So right here, Lawson. So you've been fishing these as well. What is up with the new SLX rods? What, do we, what have we added here? So these are the glass rods. So it, I've had the seven foot medium uh, with the fast uh, action on it. And I'm in love with it. Again, it feels like a really high end rod and it is, but it's that, you know, that was still a low price for it. Uh, but you can feel everything. It being a glass rod. I mean, you can tell what kind of rock you're dragging over. You can tell if it's a brown bass. I mean, you just, you can feel everything through that glass rod. So I, I've really enjoyed fishing with it a lot. Okay. So Trey on the spec side of these new SLX glass, I assume they're a composite. They're a blend. These are these are pretty much straight UD glass. I mean, these are as glassy as glassy gets. And, uh, you know, glass is back in a big way for moving baits. You know, guys really like the way it allows a fish to eat the bait. Right. And that's the biggest frustration a lot of times with crankbait fishing is you just you hook them in weird places and they don't get it right. They come up and jump and they've got, you know, a ball of hooks on the outside of their face and all those things. And 
really glass allows with that, you know, that more progressive action allows the, the rod to load and you're not yanking the bait away from the fish. Um, you know, I per personally, you know, uh, like Lawson, I love throwing a crankbait and um, it's something that within this series, you're going to have four different options. So on that 610 medium light, you're going to be able to throw smaller wood baits, little flat sides, um, you know, which are which are getting more and more popular. There was actually just an article on Bassmaster.com written by Bernie Schultz about the whole culture of uh, throwing little homemade wood cranks. And um, it's it's kind of uh, seeing a resurgence and more guys are getting into it. And then you've got your seven foot medium glass rod, which is going to be your, you know, just multi-purpose square bill rod um, for your 1.5 up to 2.5s. Um, you get into the 7.2 medium heavy glass and you got the perfect option for a chatter bait um, that can also handle kind of some of those medium diving cranks uh, um, and, you know, a bigger, a bigger square bill as well. And then, you know, that 7.4 medium heavy glass is going to get into that deeper diver, you know, your 6XD class, your DD22s, DT20s, things like that. Um, and there's, uh, there's a lot of options there. We all know how um you know how popular chatterbait fishing has gotten bladed jig fishing has gotten in recent years and that 7.2 medium heavy glass is going to be a perfect option for that i mean i know uh i've uh i've had a lot of success the last couple of years throwing some some of the more popular bladed jig styles and, and this gives that angler now it gives the the entry kind of tournament angler um everything they need in the slx series of rods to really go out there and fill your boat with tournament quality setups uh, the great thing about the SLX series is even if you roll up to the DC and pair it with an SLX rod, your setup is still under $300. So no matter which SLX rod you're pairing, uh, your reel you're pairing your SLX rod with, uh, you're going to end up with a really high quality setup at, at, a, at a good price. And, and uh, you know, it's been really successful for a reason. There's a ton of value in this stuff. So, All right. So, uh, sorry, go ahead, Lawson. Fire oh, away. Man. I was going to say. Also, something I love about this rod is the hook keeper. It's it's down here. It's out of the way. You know, you don't have to worry about your line getting hooked. Pull that up it. for us, bud. Show us where it is. Yep. Yep. It's right. So here's where your reel would be mounted. It's right under the front. Ooh, right yep. there. So it's it's in a perfect position, out of the way. And I uh, love it. Love it. Everything about this rod. And again, like Trey was saying with uh, moving baits, chatter baits, you know, square bills. Uh, when you're reeling, uh, let's just say square bills through trees and stuff. You can watch your rod tip and you can see it stop and you know you, you stop and let it float up over those branches and keep reeling but you can really tell when those fish come up and eat it and you, you know, like you said you can let them have it so you don't foul hook them or you know make them make them miss it pretty much so it the the glass aspect on it is a big game changer for sure awesome so four new rods and as usual, Trey so succinctly described each and every one of them and their applications. So hopefully for everybody watching, that gives you a helping hand. $99 retail. And the one thing you'll look at when you're looking for your reaction rods, they're all moderate action. So new SLX glass. Lawson, thanks so much for your time, bud. Really appreciate sure, you being with us. All right. You have a good night. We're going to pop you out of here. Trey, uh, we're getting down to the nitty gritty now. So let me pop some screens off here. Uh, we are going to me and you, bud. We're having a, a me and you session here. So let's do Claris. So we got new Claris that's coming on the market. Got the wrong one in my hand. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you got time. I'm going to pop this up so people can see it. Good looking rod. Kind of looks like the GL for grip as well on those rods, Trey. Absolutely. That was something that was new to the market for us with Intenza last year. And uh, Intenza has really taken the market by storm. You know, it was a series that uh, we were we were super excited about. It hit a price point we hadn't been at. And we got to launch a new feature at a, at a, at a really kind of affordable, achievable, uh, achievable uh, price point. You know, there's a lot of tech grips in the market now. You see a lot of wind grips from a lot of our competitors. And really, Shimano wanted to bring something to market that was unique. We were the first to market with this grip technology. It actually comes from the bike business, uh, the bike industry as a, as a mountain bike grip material. And what it does is it gives you just incredible control over the rod. It's super durable. It's easy to clean uh, when it's raining, when it's hot and your hands are sweaty. It just gives you that added traction you need so you're not slipping um, and just allows you to have more control over the rod, more control over your fish ultimately. So to be able to deploy a feature like this at this price point is pretty cool. Um, and we're excited to be able to do that. Uh, that's kind of the main feature. It's got this uh, kind of Shimano custom reel seat, and then it's got just a, a, a carbon blend uh, blank 
And, um, you know, we don't talk too much about the modulus of our carbon when we get into lower end rods. And, you know, you'll see in the marketplace, people will start touting 40 ton constructions and, you know, things like that at 79 and $99. And the problem with that is ultimately those rods, they break and they break quite easily, right? So we think we've kind of figured out the secret sauce on the appropriate blend of, of carbon materials for these price points that gives you a rod that feels lightweight in hand, it's incredibly sensitive and also durable, right? Because um, ultimately we want to protect our investments. We don't want to constantly be replacing rods and see piles of them in the corner of shops. And so this is something that's going to be a really well-balanced rod, uh, a lot of bang for your buck here as well. And as I can, as I'm looking at the spec sheet, I could see there was no holding back from your end on on terms of rods. Uh, we're looking at everything from six six to seven two on the casting side, and from five foot six ultralight to seven six medium heavy on the spinning side. Yes, I mean, that is a swath of rods. Well, one thing with the Clara series, you know, we don't we don't really pigeonhole these series as bass rods. I mean, you've got your really classic bass actions in here. All those. Seven Seven two casting rods are going to be perfect bass rods. You've got some some shorter ones in the casting one that are going to be for top waters and jerk baits. Um, but a lot of the spinning stuff, um, and even some of that bait cast stuff, will cross over to inshore usage at the Texas Gulf Coast. You know that uh, that six ten medium light, that six six medium. But on the spinning side, we've got everything from a five six ultralight up to a seven six medium heavy. We're going to touch trout, panfish, crappie all the way up to guys you know guys i know guys up in the north woods will use spin gear for big pike and things like that so you could put a four thousand on that seven six medium heavy and go after and target pike you can target stripers um there's all kinds of options within this series and you know 79 dollars line price throughout the series regardless what model you're getting so uh, a lot of value there for the consumer and um yeah you know claris has always been somewhat of a catch-all series for us it's been uh a really good rod um, to get into to get into the Shimano brand. Actually, my second Shimano rod I ever purchased was was a Claris, and uh, and I, I actually still have it to this day. And it's uh, it's just always been a really really good value and and a great option to get uh, to either start in the Shimano brand or to fill out your lineup because we all know we can never have too many fishing rods. So, <laughs> of course. All right, so we're gonna slide right into the next one, Trey. Uh, symmetry combo. We, we entered this in a uh, new product showcase for combo. And uh, this one really shocked me at the price, considering the features like the G free body and the rods and the amount of, of spec on this stuff. So break it down. What's up with the symmetry combo? Because it's back. Yeah, ultimately, uh, we retired the Symmetry brand name a few years ago in favor of Noski as kind of a, a initiative to globalize our spinning reel branding. And um, you know, we, we got the opportunity to bring the symmetry name back in this combo. And this is a combo only rod and reel. You're going to see this at retail for $99. There's a ton of value here. You know, we have enough confidence in this reel to call it a symmetry and it's coming with, with the rod, right? Um, this rod, uh, kind of a trade secret here that I mentioned yesterday, it's, it's actually a Celis rod with a different paint job, right? So it's, it's our $59 bass rod, essentially a uh, quality rod matched with with a uh, a symmetry reel and ton of value for the consumer here um there's more people entering the sport of fishing right now than ever before uh you know during coronavirus fishing has kind of been deemed as a safe and healthy activity for families and friends great way to spend time outdoors uh really kind of rooted in social distancing in a lot of ways and so we're seeing a ton of new anglers to the sport and that's awesome um you know, I personally have had a lot of uh, new people and friends who I would just consider to be non-fishing friends reach out to me recently and ask for, you know, gear recommendations. How do I get into the sport? And ultimately, it's best to steer those people towards a combo when they're just dipping their toe in the waters into fishing. And this is always going to be my go-to from now on. Whenever somebody's like, hey, I've, you know, I've been out of fishing for 20 years or I'm just getting into it or, you know, my, my kid wants a setup, but I'm really want to get him something good quality right uh this symmetry combo is going to be a great option and uh we got a host of options here too you've got the 1000 on a 5.6 ultralight up to or uh up to a 4000 with that 7.6 medium heavy and you've just got uh you're covering all the bases and two-piece options for which are easy to ship they're easy to store in the trunk of your car they're great for john boats and small boats um you know i know up in the north woods and up in canada a lot of fishing is done on a small aluminum boats. I, I grew up fishing up in Lake of the Woods and Lake Vermilion in Minnesota. And most of the time we were fishing in like a 
14 foot of Luma craft, right? So those, uh, those smaller boats, uh, is really great, uh, for these two piece rods and, you know, driving around with a, who doesn't want to keep a rod in, in the trunk of their car. And, um, <laughs> that's a perfect option for a two piece as well. I've, I've had a, I have one in my toolbox in my pickup truck right now. I've got a two piece spinning rod. It's like the, the go-to for, for having that pond rod for when you're on your lunch break or on your way to work in the morning. So. Perfect. Uh, so 14 models, seven of those are two piece, everything from five foot six to seven, six from 1000 to 4000 size reels and on market this fall. Yep. You'll see these in retailers this fall. We're actually getting some just a really great response to this from, from the retailer side. So you're going to see these pretty widely distributed. And, uh, you know, this is something that we're putting a big push behind and, you know, a ton of quality here, a ton of value for the consumer and the retailer. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to be able to, to get really serious into the combo category. And ultimately with all these new people entering fishing, we want to recruit them into the Shimano brand with high quality products. And, uh, and ultimately, that's a, a great way to keep people from abandoning fishing, right? When you have success fishing and you use good gear and you're not frustrated, man, it makes it so much more enjoyable. I can think of so many kids that get burnt out because they have bad experiences, whether they're not catch, catching fish or their gear is difficult to use or it breaks or all those things. I mean, uh, if you're trying to get your kid into fishing, um, you know, buy them some decent quality gear and, and they'll likely enjoy their experience. And I was fortunate to have people in my life, like my father and grandfathers that believed in the Shimano brand and, and put good quality gear in our hands. And now here I am 30 years later, just absolutely addicted to it. So, um, you know, it's a, a great option for it. And, uh, we hope that uh, this helps get a lot more, a lot of new customers into our brand. So, well, Trey, we're going to let you go tonight. Thank you so much. I mean, phenomenal year. I'm, I'm incredibly excited for the year. You guys and your team have done such a great job with the new products. So congratulations, obviously, from all of us and from the from the basically the consumers. I mean, folks, you are in for some of the best gear at the best value you have ever seen this year. So we're going to keep going. We got more stuff coming. So, Trey, we're going to let you skip out. Thanks for your time. Good seeing you. Thanks for doing this, JP. No time, no problem at all. All right, folks. So we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to have Adam Deal joining us very shortly. We got a couple more rods, and then we have actually we got uh, Muskie as well. So let's do Stimula first. We're going to bring Adam on, and then we're going to bring Chris Willen in as well. So I got Adam here uh, at the stream. So there is Adam. We're going to pop him up like this, and let me find some stuff for us, Adam. We're doing Stimula, correct? That is correct, JP. All right, so here it is, folks. So new rod for this year, redesign Stimula. So Adam, take it away, bud. What's up with the new Stimula series? So we kind of had a whole new redesign on this Stimula. Um, I mean, it's a new new blank. It's a new color. Uh, we changed up the handles. The, the previous generation, the Stimula, it just needed a refresh. Um, and everything I wanted to do here, here was to bring in, you know, that quality of rod that you could bring down at, at this price point. Uh, and, and that's what we tried to do here. So. We, uh, we changed the guides a little bit, uh, streamlined them to where they needed to be for each of the different models. Uh, there's still going to be the, the aluminum oxide guide, so even guys that are using braids and stuff like that, it still gives you that smooth transition. Um, it's not going to have a lot of abrasion rubbing into the, into the guide frame or anything like that. Other thing we did here, we, we are using P-cork on this. So what I like about the P-cork is it gives you that cosmetic appeal of a cork, but it, you can still use it at a lower price point. Um, and you get the durability of an EVA. So it's a, it's essentially like an EVA cork material. Um, but the foregrip itself is still, it's still a high quality cork. It's a double A cork. So when you're fighting a fish and you, you know, you're pushing down on that rod, it's not going to flex or anything like that. So you can, you know, take that P cork, brush it against your side. It's going to have a little bit of give, a little bit of comfort there. But when you're fighting it in your hand, the foregrip's not going to move any on you. All right. So, and again, we have, uh, looks like how many, 10 models or no more, 12? Yeah, similar lineup to what we had in the in the previous generation. You know, five six for your panfish stuff like that, all the way up to a seven foot medium heavy, um, for you know whatever application. Twenty four ninety twenty four ninety nine. I mean, yeah. In reality, so and it's a great entry level rod. You guys it looks like you've done a great job with Adam, but we're gonna we're gonna slide over because from Stimula, we're gonna move over. We're gonna bring Chris Willen into the mix here. Chris, how you doing, bud? Hey JP, I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good. Sorry for the wait, dude. We've been we've been long talking this entire thing, but uh, for all the toothy critter fans, uh, we've got something new as well. And you have been the guy to try to fish it. 
Compre Musky. So Adam's got one in his hand. I'm going to pop Adam up quickly, and then I'm going to ask you, Chris, how it worked out for you with the using the new rods. But uh, Adam, break down the new Compre Musky. Yep. So you can see there's uh, there's three of our handle configurations. So there's the two that you just showed, um, the one with the uh, the EVA butt um, with the EVA shrink or that shrink tube. That's going to be the trolling model. And the other model with the the TCS Fuji reel seat. That's going to be um, everything that's you know your your eight foot heavy up to or your seven foot six medium heavy up to the uh the eight foot extra heavy and then on the eight foot six and the nine foot heavy which are going to be the telescopic models those are going to have the fuji pss real seat so it's that that bigger bulkier real seat um gives you a really good power when especially if you're doing like up to a trans 500 you got a lot of palming surface there um, brace your your hand against that all right, uh, and Chris, you've had a chance to to use these things, obviously. Yep. Uh, what's your impressions? What techniques have you used them for, and how have they been performing? Well, we've used everything from um, the shortest rod in the lineup uh, for your springtime baits, uh, maybe your jig and reaper combos, or your smaller top waters, like maybe like a one thirty whopper plopper or something like that. Um, so the smaller model works really good for that stuff. And I'm in the river a lot, so I'm in a smaller boat. And we tend to fish a little bit smaller baits than um, some of the like Vermilion and Mille Lacs guys. So the smaller models work really good for that. And then um, like he was just showing with the larger models with the telescoping handle, um, you know, we're running double tens on those. We're running bulldogs. We're running stuff like, like that. And um, that, that bigger palming grip, like he was just showing really works well for those. And then uh, just kind of like your standard sizes, which, um, you know, you're running your regular bucktails, maybe your jerk baits, your gliders and stuff like that. Um, I'm really excited to see the Compre come back. You know, the Compre is a heavyweight name in musky fishing. Um, a lot of guys that maybe only musky fish for part of the year, uh, run a lot of these rods or have older Shimano Compre rods. So I think, uh, you know, as a, you know, former, uh, just regular consumer, I'm really excited about seeing these come back and, you know, having a few guys uh, pick these things up to just have as their, you know, their main musky stick, but they, maybe they only musky fish 15, 16 days a year. And I'm noticing, so two telescopic models, the eight, six and the nine, uh, everything else being a one piece. Uh, Adam, I'm noticing a commonality between this and actually the Travala PX series, the Sea Guide. Uh, what's up with Sea Guide? I've seen it on Travala PX. Uh, is it a new new guide? What's what's the deal? I know you're techie on the guide stuff, dude. So give me the lowdown. So the advantage with the Sea Guide is we get really good quality guides, um, and we can put a high quality insert and frame on on some of these models that aren't you know over you know three four hundred dollars, and they need you know a titanium guide or they need you know an SIC insert or something. You know, obviously Fuji is, is still the highest quality, but to be able to bring down into into some of these price points, I can still allow the consumer, you know, the best quality guide that I can put at that price point. Um, and that's, that's what we're doing with a lot of these sea guide guides. In this case, they're, these are all a double foot guide. Um, they're the XBG double foot all the way down to the tip. This is going to be a sea guide, but it's a, a Carbola tip. Um, and that's going to be for the guys that, uh, especially with musky fishing, sometimes you, you reel in and you'll still hit the, that tip with your, with your swivel from your leader. Um, and so that Carbola tip doesn't have an insert to it. It's a it's a wall one piece uh, ring on it, so you can't pop off that that uh, that insert on it. So in the case of the the skicks, we use an SIC insert. Um, that SIC it's practically a diamond. Uh, it's it's a hard very hard density material, so it's not it doesn't pop out very likely. Um, but in this case, we we have a large request, and that's it's basically been part of the family with the comp rate to to still keep that carbolo tip, uh, just because. That has such a good reputation, especially within the Compre family and the Musky lineup. All right, and uh, very interesting stuff. So, Chris, I'm going to ask you: if someone is going to get into musky fishing, what's the one new Compre model you would recommend as a jack of all trades? I think if you were going to get one, I would get the nine foot heavy telescoping model. Um, that rod will really handle just about everything you can throw at it, and then you've still got the capability of uh, shortening it down when you do. Um, you know, break it down and it, it'll store in your, in your boat, uh, maybe your smaller boat and you're not, you know, set up specifically for musky fishing. So it's going to be able to, uh, store really well. And I know a nine foot heavy is one of my personal go-tos, um, 
and and all models. All right. Uh, again, Chris, thanks so much for hanging in the background there for so long. We've been a little long winded. We're an hour and four minutes, but we got more product to talk about. It's kind of crazy. There's so much stuff. Uh, Chris and Adam, thank you so much for your time, guys. We're going to move on and get into the next stuff. So I'm going to let you guys slide out the back. I hope you guys have a great night. Uh, all right. And I'm going to pop myself up here for a second. Uh, we're going to move over to bringing in Alex Davis while we're doing this. And uh, where's my good buddy, Alex? There you are. I'm here. Hi, bud. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. All right. Awesome. Uh, we are, Alex, talking about something a little bit cool because this was the culmination of a whole bunch of pros in a room chit-chatting about new rods. So let me pop this up. IMX Pro, thank you, IMX Pro, uh, five new models, five new models. So for those of you who've been waiting for this, G. Loomis has brought out five new models in the IMX Pro lineup. There is a ledge rod, which is right up Alex's alley. Uh, there is a open hook swim bait model. There is a Ned rod, a bait rod. Uh, I can name four of those things that I've seen Alex throw. I have yet to see him throw a Ned. He's not much of a spinning guy, but for the Northerners, <laughs> for the Northerners, the Ned is going to mean a lot. So, Alex, give me a little bit of a breakdown here, bud. What have you? Which ones have you put your mitts on so far? Um, I've thrown the chatterbait rod and I've thrown the ledge rod and the swimbait rod. And, uh, what was really cool about these rods is last year we had a, a Shimano summit and they, it did what well, this wasn't planned. It was like all of a sudden an hour, we went into a room and talked about rods. And I think everyone, I'm not going to say complain, but we all had, we want a rod to do a certain thing. I'm a big technique specific rod guy. And I know a lot of people, uh, they just want a rod to do everything, but I, I want one rod to do one thing. I want the best, the best rod to do one thing. Um, that way I just feel like if I have the best rod to do it, I'm not going to lose fish. It's going to put me more efficient, uh, land more, catch more. And that was the whole gist of this. And we had, I think like 10 or 12 pros and everyone was spitting out ideas saying what we like. And then the guys from, uh, Loomis come up with this and send it. And I think I, I know I personally worked on a ledge rod a lot. and um, that's my favorite rod. It's one of my favorite things to do. I actually used it today and we had uh, a ball. Some people will see pictures of the fish we caught later on Instagram. But um, this rod series is really important. It, it's it actually it was very important to me just to, to make the best rod possible. Now, you talk about having a technique specific rod. Let's explain to the, the viewers. What is it about a rod that you want? Like why specific things? Like when you talk ledge rod. Why, what, what are you looking for in a ledge rod? I just showed the spit swim bait rod here, but is there a specific taper, a shutoff point, a tip action that you're looking for when you want these rods done a certain way? Okay. To me, the ledge rod, I, the best rod I've ever used was a steelhead salmon rod. Um, and the reason was it was long. It was like an eight foot rod and it was actually like a medium heavy, heavy, and it had a parabolic action. It was perfect for throwing uh, big swim baits. You want a parabolic bend because you're throwing big baits um, and you don't want to rip holes in them. I used to try to use a flipping stick and that just did not work at all. So I went to actually steelhead rods. That's what I used. That was the best thing. But the problem is it had problems. The handles was way too long. It was like 15 inch handle, 16 inch handle. So I was, I was getting the best action of the rod, but the worst handle known to man. So these rods need to do a specific thing and they have the the 913 and 914 the 13 is going to do smaller things you'll actually be able to throw like a lightweight jig on it a half ounce swim bait um it's just kind of like to me a, a baby ledge rod um my baby personally is the 914 i i want ounce swim baits i want ounce scroungers um it'll throw an 8xd uh, the Magnum square bills, I know there's Magnum square bills that weigh like two ounces. So all your big baits, that rod can throw absolutely everything. Um, it's it's absolutely amazing, to be honest with you. So that's a 7.7 seven heavy fast action. Uh, we had a, a comment here from one of our Facebook viewers uh, asking what a ledge rod is. So for ledge fishing, it's that offshore drop of, stru of structure that could have brush on it. But basically, you guys are targeting offshore drops in depth that will the fish will pile up on, correct? We're doing any any drop. It doesn't have to be a ledge where it goes from 10 to 30. A any drop 
that you're throwing big baits, this rod's going to be the rod for you. I mean, it, it could be um, – you could just be targeting actually big grass flats if you wanted to throw like a, a ounce – chatterbait ounce and a quarter chatterbait that'd be the rod i would throw it on instead of the the bladed jig the bladed jig rod's a great rod but it's not going to handle an ounce and a quarter that the lead drug will do right okay so i have all the rods up here alex i don't know how well you can see them but so the imx pro swim bait rods these were not designed like glide baits or you know big old hollow bodies these are designed for open hook you know whether it's ball head mushroom head football head swim bait application and they've got everything from an 862, 863, and an 882 spinning. So two casting, one spinning, seven foot two and seven foot four. That's going to cover everything from like a three inch swim bait all the way up to a five inch swim bait in most cases, will it not? The, that we talked about that last year, and um, a lot of people still throw it on a spinning rod, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I'm not a spinning rod guy. I personally don't like it. So for me, if I can ever throw anything on a casting rod, I want to. And I just feel like I can control those small swim baits on a casting rod better than I can um, a spinning rod. So we told the guys from Loomis, hey, this is what we want. And they delivered. And you can throw anything from uh, like a rhythm wave or a, a Kitek style that's like a 2.8, 2.3, all the way up to you can actually throw like the four threes, the four eights, um, put it on a bigger half ounce head. So Anything from the itty bitty ones to the the four and a half inch ones, that rod's gonna cover you. Personally, I don't like the spinning rod's great, but I want the bait caster. I can just ten times better with the bait caster. All right, and then the bladed jig rod, uh, two models, seven foot two, seven foot four, so ten to seventeen rated, twelve to twenty rated. So, folks, look at the look at the lure weight ratings. It makes it real easy to decide if you're a guy who's throwing quarters to half ounce chatterbaits which a lot of shallow anglers are throwing that size chatterbait you know you're probably going to want the 862 if you're throwing th uh, you know three eighths to three quarters which is what i do a lot of up here because of the clear water and we move them a lot quicker or if you're a florida weed guy and you're snapping it out of weeds and you're throwing that heavier bait in deeper water the 883 would be the one you want i actually had a chance to fish the 883 the other day on simcoe for smallmouth and it absolutely is amazing you'll flex that rod and it says fast action it's got a lot of backbone but when you lock into a fish it's got the right give to make sure that fish stays pegged and that's really the key when you're using these rods these technique specific rods and you know the multi-taper technology that loomis has been using to allow them to you know have that taper exactly where you need it the power under certain load absorb shock of a fish not lose the bait you know better hookup percentage so um, Alex, you talk about lipless. I've thrown lipless with you. You damage fish on TN 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, what is it? Why did you want a 855 CBR ledge rod, 7 1, 10 to 20 rated? What were you looking for? Uh, to me, I don't really like a, a super long rod for throwing a lipless. Um, I feel like I don't need a 7 6 or a 7 5. Uh, some, I just don't personally, I don't need it. I learned actually on the 855, the old GLX, the old, old, like the old green one. So like two generations ago. So I learned on that rod to throw a lipless and it was the best rod I've ever thrown. I, I didn't lose hardly any fish on it. So when we was talking about it, I said, this is perfect. You, a lot of guys, they don't need a seven, six, I'm, I'm six, one, six, two. And that's perfect. You know, you get a smaller guy, it's five, you know, five, eight, five, nine. That's not a small guy, but he doesn't want a 7.5 rod to try to throw a lipless. It's just too much rod. and It's too much of a workout. So this rod right here, it has the perfect action. Um, you can rip it really easy, but when fish get it, it loads up great. So that rod right there is a, if you ever want to throw any kind of a lipless bait, a trap, that's the rod to go for. Awesome. And are you throwing them? You're a, you're a mono guy, a floral guy, a braid guy. What are you doing? I'm a floral guy. I've tried everything. Uh, Braid's just going to rip it out of him. You lose way too many. Mono, I just don't feel like I can feel anything. So 15-pound fluoro with that rod and a, a six six gear, I throw a crowd of 200. Um, that's just perfect. It, it, you have the all-around best setup. You only need to buy – you need to buy like three so you can throw, have three different colors, but that's the only setup you need. And I think that's an important thing to talk about is the line because – these rods are all designed for either floral or mono based on their ratings and from the techniques that people are using them for. So very important, you know, people are going to go out and buy a bladed jig rod and then go crank some 50 pound braid on it 
it's probably not going to perform exactly as well as it will where I throw 18 pound fluoro on that, you know, that heavier bladed jig rod. Someone's going to go through a 50 pound braid. You might end up missing fish and the rod won't perform exactly how you expect it to. Yeah. All these rods was designed by us pros and we felt like most everything you're doing that with fluorocarbon. So they was all pretty much designed around fluorocarbon. So if you do get braid with one and you feel like it's probably jerking out of his mouth and making holes, there's that's the reason why they was does not designed to throw braid on it. Um, just for instance, if you're a guy that throws braid on the uh, bladed jig rod, you would probably want to go down in power, even with a half ounce. You just want to go down in power just because you're it's it's just braids too much for a, a rod like that. But no stretch, yeah, yeah. To me, throw fluorocarbon, you'll never go back. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Alex, I'm going to ask you to hang. We're going to go through our accessory bags, and then we've got new jackal lures coming up. So can you just hang for with us for a bit? I got them right here. All right, so give me a second. I'm going to jump in with Nick here, and then we're coming right back to you. Okay, bud? Sounds good. All right, so let's bring Nick into the mix here. Nick, how are you, bud? I'm doing well. How are you doing, JP? I'm doing great. So I'm going to pull up some of our new stuff. What do you want to start with, Nick? What do you got on the table there? I got our Baltica tackle bag for 2020. All right, let me bring it up, and I'm going to let you go to town on it. All right, bud, let us have it. Sure. So our new 2020 Baltica tackle bag some of you may be familiar with some of our bags. Um, we actually did a complete revamp of our previous collections. A lot of them had uh, had around for quite some time. So we looked at the marketplace, um, some customer feedback, dealer feedback, trying to figure out how we can improve our bags, how can we make them better. And so we start off here with our Baltical Tackle Bag. It's a top loaded bag, comes in two sizes. Um, depending on the size, medium or large, you'll get four tackle trays. Um, the large Large comes with 3,700 size tackle trays, while the medium comes with 36. Now you've got compartments on the front, in the back, on the sides. You got a shoulder strap; it's adjustable. Uh, it's really all kinds of uses for this bag. The key new features for this bag will be a ripstop polyester fabric throughout, which is a real durable fabric, uh, prevents snags and hooks and tears. Next, we have all TPU zippers, so heavy-duty plastic zippers. Um, super durable, also key corrosion resistant. And finally, we have a uh, double reinforced stitch seams. So that means all of our key pain points from the previous models uh, where you'd have breakage for overloaded or just over normal use and wear and tear. These bags are built to last longer by reinforced stitch seams, which means again, length of this bag is gonna, is gonna last you much longer. You can feel confident loading it fully going on an adventure, catching what you need to catch, and then bringing it back home and not worrying about this bag. All right, and we also have uh, three other things. So what do you got next to you now? Yeah, so next in the lineup, we've got our updated Black Moon backpack. So we've, Black Moon backpacks for us, a uh, very popular seller. Uh, obviously, these, these are very versatile bags when it comes to whether you're pond hopping, whether you're bringing it offshore. Um, you can really do everything with these bags. We've got two different models, a front load, a top load. They are relatively similar in size. So they're identical in price. The, the front load, as it as it, the name states, loads from the front, includes four 3,600 size tackle trays. You got side pockets, you got additional storage in the front. You got a main compartment up top where you can throw your reels, you can throw your jacket, uh, any kind of additional items you want to put in here. A slip resistant handle. Again, same ripstop fabric throughout. You've got the reinforced stitch seams. And again, TPU corrosion resistant zippers. That's our front load model. And then our Top load model, I bring here. So as the name kind of states here as well, you've got a main zipper that goes right down the center of the bag, kind of lays it open. And it will include three of these 3,700 size large tackle boxes. You also got all kinds of zipper storage inside. But when you close the bag, one of the key features for this bag is you open up the front compartment, accessible by these TPU zippers, you got a Velcro backed wall. So this is a brand new feature for this bag. It will include four of these reusable PVC heavy duty bags. Throw your soft plastics in, throw whatever you need to go on, on your next trip. And then again, you load the bag up, you stick it in against that Velcro wall and it, st and it stays there and it's safe. And it's much easier to use, much easier access. Tear it out, put it in, load it up, you're ready to go. Perfect. And uh, we also have uh, the Barona, I believe you have there. Yeah, another popular sell for us, available in size large this year. Again, the key way of, of wearing this bag is through this adjustable shoulder strap. 
main huge compartment up top accessible to these TPU zippers. Again, ripstop fabric throughout. You'll notice the colorways. We've tied in all the color scheming for all these new bags. It's going to be a really nice slick black. Highlights in the Shimano Cyan as well as white. This bag, you have access through zippers and or Velcro at the top, zippers on the side. You've got three of the large 3,700 size tackle boxes that will be included with this bag. And again, we've, we've actually, we actually increased the durability of these liners. So the shelving, uh, when you load these boxes up, they get very heavy. In previous models, you know, it would, it would obviously cause a little more difficult access to the bottom trays. But now, since we've increased that durability and that thickness, it's much easier to get all the trays in and out much quicker. Awesome. Some phenomenal explanations here, Nick. You're just knocking through the features here. Uh, and we got one last one we want to show people. And again, this is great for so many people are, you know, whether you're a co-angler touring or you're, you know, you don't have a boat and you fish with a bunch of buddies who have boats. This is going to help keep you completely organized when you're getting out there on the water, which is the name of the game. Nobody likes wasting time. So uh, Baraha, I believe it's it's pronounced. Yep. The Baraha worm binders, um, as the name kind of indicates, this bag is available in two sizes, a medium and large. And depending on the size, it basically dictates not only the size of the bag, but the size of the resealable PVC bags on the inside. So again, these bags are easy to take out through this, this ring binder. You also have additional storage on top here. These are much more durable, heavy duty bags than the previous models. So these are, again, are gonna last you much longer. So feel comfortable throwing yourself plastics in here or other terminal. Um, again, a very heavy duty TPU zipper and then an easy to carry handle. Makes it real easy to take with you on, on any kind of fishing trip you're looking to do. Awesome, and again, some great products, folks. So there's uh, five models, basically, when you consider the two backpacks, uh, brand new for this year, released at this virtual iCast. Nick, thank you so much for your time. Uh, greatly appreciate it. If we get any tech questions, uh, I will fire up the side, and you have Andrew there. He'll be able to let you know what needs to be answered. So, Nick, yes, thanks very much, buddy. I appreciate it. Have a good one. All right. And we're going to bring back my good buddy, Alex Davis, and we're going to wait for Adam Litton to show up. Um, we've got some new products coming from our good friends at Jackal. I see Adam sitting down. Adam, uh, let's do this. So there's Adam. What's hey, up? Hey, guys. Sorry, bud. We're keeping the best for last year. We're yeah. kind of <laughs> kind of sitting around for a while. You and Alex. Sorry, boys. It's been a long one. Hour and 21 minutes so far. Uh, I'm on my, I'm on my, at the refresh. So great Keep America Fishing Cups from Yeti that we got at ICAST last year. I am actually missing all you guys because normally we'd be in Orlando sweating with extreme humidity. Yeah. And uh, it, it does suck. I'm not able to see you, but I'm glad we're able to do this and bring the new products to everybody. So yep. uh, let's start off. People are sticking around. So it's great to still see, you know, everybody You're, watching. Hanging yeah, in. we have a ton of people on watching us. And folks, again, one thing you can do to help us get the word out, this is going to live on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook channel. Just click the little share button. It's going to take you like, what, two seconds? Grab the mouse, click the button, help us get the word out. If you got a buddy who's looking for some new products, tag them in the comments. It's a great way to send them this and they're going to be able to see it. And uh, also click like or whatever you got to do. We love interactions. It helps us. If you have questions, fire them up there. Our team at SAC is sitting there waiting to answer questions. They've been answering them all night. So Jackal, uh, the TN series of rattle baits have been around for a long time. TN60, TN70. Then the disc knocker came out. I know I've thrown them with Alex. I know what a fan he is of Spawn Tiger as a color in general. Uh, TN50 is the new one. Look at yeah, Alex. Yeah. Oh, in his head. <laughs> yeah. so, you can see it. It's kind of small, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what I can do for you there, Adam? How's that? Yeah, that works. Yeah. All right. So, um, this is a much smaller bait. It's going to be two and a half inches, uh, five sixteenths of an ounce. Uh, we mainly brought this in um, because it was requested from the ice market. Um, so a lot of guys are going to use this, but Anytime those bass are keyed in on a smaller shad, uh, you know, this is going to match that perfectly. Um, I know Alex can probably speak to that more. Uh, comes with all the great features that the larger 1670 size come in as well. Um, just a smaller package. So. All right. And so the one thing that's unique, folks, if you've never seen a TN, it's that tungsten chin that is on them that, you know, makes them run that nose down. Alex, I know you've been a big proponent. You've caught a ton of fish on these baits. Um, what are you seeing the advantage? May spring of the year kind of thing when the 50, when, you know, the shad spawn, the fish are a little smaller, the bait's a little smaller. 
I see two advantages in the fall uh, on Gunnersville. They eat shad that's like this long, and it's really hard to duplicate it. Even with um, a 60, it, your, your bait's too big. So with the 50 in schooling fish, when they're eating shad that's that big, it's going to be a big player. Um, you need one of them bait fish finesse rods, honestly, for this because it's so small. So that would be nice. Uh, Trey, if you're watching, get me one of those. The Zodiac well. Thank you. Uh, but uh, the one thing that I'm probably the most geeked out with this thing is in the spring on Gunnersville, they live so shallow it's ridiculous. And I've always been a fan of a Bayou Boogie. Um, that's kind of an old school bait that probably a lot of people haven't even heard of. Them. And it's itty bitty and it's hard to throw, but it runs a foot deep. Um, a lot of times these fish get super, super shallow. And actually when they hit it, you'll see like mud come up. So this bait right here is like the old school Bayou Boogie. Um, and I'm really, really excited because it actually has good hooks on it. It will hook them. It has great colors. So I don't have to go real straight old school no more. I can come out firing with the 50. Yeah. And uh, since Alex spoke about the colors too, we did bring in a few just for the ice guys. Uh, you can see here on this slide, there's the money, there's a pink tiger, and there's also a static shock. So just for that ice market specifically, uh, some bright colors. Yeah. And sprinkle Wagasaki, obviously a new one, but you know, a great color, much like super shad. Uh, it's got that real natural purpley green brown back. I mean, just, color that works all over the country. So great variety, uh, two inches, three eighths of an ounce, uh, you know, just a great bait to work in a variety of situations like these guys have said. So I'm going to slide over to the next one here, guys, while we're going on it. Um, I've actually got one in my hands here as well, but let's see, let's go to this. So due to popular demand, rearrange MR. Yep. Adam, it's yep. all to you. We brought in a deeper diver re-range. This one's going to dive to six to eight feet. Uh, again, comes with that TG zero friction weight transfer system that comes in the 110 size. It's going to be offered in the same eight colors. Um, yeah, it's the same same 110 bait, only a deeper diver, essentially. So um, a lot of great applications. Again, I'm sure Alex can speak to some of that, uh, more the, the fun part of it. He gets to use them. <laughs> and again, folks, if you haven't noticed ever with jackal baits, I'm going to hold this one up for you here, see if we can get the right light on it. Um, hook quality on these baits is second to none in my opinion. Uh, whether they're owners or gammies that they're using, but they use both. I have seen them on. They're phenomenal. It's not a necessary, it's necessary, it's not necessary, I should say, to ever change your hooks when they come out of the package. And that's one thing I appreciate about these baits. The other thing with this one here, the Rearrange series is the zero TG, zero friction TG tungsten weight. So when you're casting this thing, it goes to the back. But Alex, you've used quite a bit of this. I know I've seen you on Gunnersville, especially just wreck them on a jerk bait. Um, what are you liking about this little deeper diver? Um, I like exactly what it is—a deeper diver. That's one kind of issue that it's not the issue I had with Rearrange, but I like for a jerk bait to dive deeper. Um, Steamer Banks Rip Rap over at Smith Lake fishing for spots. I, a five foot diving jerk bait is good. Four to five foot, it's good. But a lot of times, I just want it to go deeper. I want it to seven, eight foot. And uh, this is the new one. And that's what it's going to go to. The bill's just a little bit longer, um, get you extra depth. So for spot small mouse and deeper grass lines like eelgrass that grows out, this year it's growing in like 11 and 12 foot right now in Gunnersville. So I can take this jerk bait this winter and get it down there where it needs to be. And I still have the, you know, the, the original re-range where if you need it to go shallower, you can. But I'm a big fan of this. Um, got it in all the colors. Blue Pearl Shad, that's my favorite color, hands down. So that's all That's all I need. Just give me that one and I'm good. <laughs> and again, the size. So it's a 110, four and a third inch. Um, there is no 140 like the regular re-range. Correct, Adam? Correct. Yep. We're only offering it in the 110 size right now. So, yep. That just helps you cover more bases. Like Alex said, those fish are holding a little bit deeper. It just gives you a – you know, another thing to add to your arsenal out there. All right. So that is the new Rearrange MR. And we got one more here to pop up. This one is, I love innovation. That's one thing I will say. I love things that are different. It's one thing, yes, suspending jerk baits work and crawl lures and plastics work. And yes, crankbaits all basically look the same, but they have different actions. But this one, to me, really stood out. Gargle. So, Adam, what do you got in your hands there? I have the gargle in my hands. 
So this is a buzz bait, right? So it's going to have this single prop design on it. Uh, gives off kind of a, a more subtle sound than your your traditional buzz bait. It's a little quieter, um, but a different sound too. And you'll see here that blade's free swinging. So that's going to do a few things for you. One, it's going to help you increase your casting distance, which you know is an issue with traditional buzz baits as well. Uh, and it's also going to increase your hookup ratio because that's able to move out of the way. So when that bass comes up and eats it, you know it's going to collapse down better hookup. Uh, so yeah, it has some unique features, some, some, some well thought out technologies that are, that were involved in, in developing this as well. All right. And uh, Alex, I know you've played with a lot of jackal baits, including all their wire baits. I mean, there's, there's a reason why they call you the spinner bait kid. Uh, what's your, what's your thoughts on the gargle in terms of using it? I know you've put it up to test. I like the black one. That's that's my favorite. I'm just a black buzz bait guy. At first, I was really kind of uh, I, when I got it, I I didn't really know what to think about it because it, it looks like a spinner bait. I mean, it honestly it's on a spinner bait arm, and then it just comes out and it just kind of dies. And the buzz bait, when I first looked at it, I thought, well, it's missing half the blade. I mean, that was kind of my first initial thought is it's missing half the blade because it's only half of it. And I was like, I'm curious to see. Luckily, my mom and dad have a pool. Um, I immediately walked over there and was like, I got to try something, turn the pool off. And the action of it, it, it runs true. Soon as you get it to come up, it's, it's like a buzz bait, but like I said, it's kind of like half of a buzz bait. So it's not putting off the big loud buzz bait sound, but it's still giving you that action. So it's almost like if I had to try to, to describe it to somebody, it would be like throwing a spinner bait as far as the hookup, but it's going to be like throwing almost uh, like a frog with a paddle tail on it. It doesn't give a whole lot like a buzz bait. So it's not kind of in your face and loud, but it gives off just enough to where you see it. And it's always waking. Um, that's what I really like about it. It's like a subtle buzz bait or like a sprinkler frog kind of. Yes. Um, it would be pretty much if you were in an area and someone's throwing a buzz bait and that's what the hype is. I think you could go behind people with this thing and absolutely wreck them and you wouldn't have to worry that, oh, that guy's already went through that area with a buzz bait. I think this right here, fishing anymore, you need something different. If you throw what everyone else is throwing, you're just going to kind of get the same results. And that's where Jackal comes up with different, unique things that get bit. And that's where this bait's going to, to me, that's where it's going to, that's where it's going to fall in line. It's something unique. Not everybody has it. You're, if you're throwing it, you can probably go right behind somebody and catch them. So uh, hats off to Jackal props up on this one. Yeah, absolutely. And if you really look at the detail on the head, you can't really see it because of the lights we got on here. But there's actually the Jackal logo in the eye of these things. I mean, really, really fantastically finished, good quality hardware, owner triple cutting hook on the bait itself. So very high quality. And $9.99 is the retail MSRP on it. So uh, six colors and three-eighths of an ounce. Alex, how much did you find that the breakaway of the blade actually facing the other way on the cast helped with the distance like Adam mentioned? I feel like you're throwing a buzz bait, but you're not having the the torpedo effect of the blade. So it would almost be like just cut your buzz bait blade off and throw it, and that's what you're getting. The, the distance was superb. One thing I do like about it, you really can't tell how big that wire is. Um, that wire is stout. I don't know what that actually is. Adam might know that number. But it is stout. It's not going to bend. Like a lot of times with the buzz bait, when they get it, especially I throw it on braid, 50-pound braid, and it'll open it up. When you go to bend it back, it snaps right there at the line tie. This is not going to happen with this thing. It's it's heavy-duty wire. You still get the vibration. still get the sound, but you don't have to worry about breaking. So break down a combo for me, Alex. You want to give people recommendations. They want to pick up a gargle. Maybe they need a new, you know, SLX, MGL, maybe they need a new rod, maybe they need something. What do you what do you want to set yourself up for when you're using something like this? Depends on what you're going to throw it on. If you're going to throw it on braid, I would go 72 medium zodius. I personally would put it on a Corrado 200 cuz I throw braid so I do super long cast 50 pound braid with it. Um, if you're not going to throw braid and you're the old school mono, there's nothing wrong with that throwing a buzz bait. Um, I would go 72 medium heavy zodius. Still with a Karadu 200, probably because you're going to be throwing 20 pound mono on it. You just need a bigger capacity. So that's to me the Zodius. I, I can't say enough about it. I want them real bad. So Trey, if you're listening, this guy needs them real bad because that's my favorite, my favorite rod ever. And then when I saw the handle, the monocoque handle, I was like, 
Oh dear God, I need it. So Trey, if you're listening, this way. He, he's listening. He's there. This way, Trey. Yeah, this way. I'll go get him if he didn't hear. Don't worry. We'll make- yeah, if they're in that product room, I'm coming to get him tomorrow. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, guys, thank you for all your time tonight. Obviously, we have ripped through everything. Adam, I'm going to see you tomorrow night when we do the saltwater one, I assume, because you've got yep. some new product under your belt as well. Got some uh, really Alex, cool stuff. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. I've actually got some of them here, and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to do some video work for you, bud, so we can truly show the potential of that, that awesome. flash boost. So, Alex, thanks for your time. I appreciate you hanging out for an hour and a half with us. Go get some rest. I'm sure you're guiding tomorrow morning. Yep, 4.15 in the morning. I'll be there. Right, if anyone needs a phone call, I'll call them. <laughs> right. Get some rest, bud. Thanks for your time. Adam, again, thanks for your time. Uh, we're going to pop you guys out of here. And, folks, hey, you hung with me for an hour and 34 minutes, and we gave you the goods on our freshwater product for 2020 for virtual iCast. I want to say thank you. Uh, if you could do us a favor, like I've mentioned a couple times, hit the share button. Tag a buddy. Help us get the word out. This is going to live on the Shimano YouTube channel. It's also going to live on our Facebook channel. We went through just a quick recap. So in case you're hitting the end of this, Corrado MGL70, Vanford, Zodius, SLX70, SLX Glass Rods, Claris, Symmetry Combos, Compre. Uh, when it comes to oh Stimula Rods, and then for our bags, Baltica Black Moon Backpack, Baraja, Barona Tackle Bag, and then... IMX Pro with all new technique specific rods. They've got a ledge rod, a swim bait rod, a bladed jig rod, a trap rod, and a Ned rig rod. And then also from Jackal, Gargle, uh, Rerange MR110, and the TN50. So tons and tons of product for you guys to check out. We are excited. This stuff should be hitting the fall market. If you have any questions, fire them right in the comment section for us. That would be right down there somewhere. Hit them. Shimano North America will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you guys for joining us. We will see you tomorrow night, 7 p.m. We're deep diving on saltwater, and I cannot wait. Take care. Have a great night.